Hi, I'm Misha here. And this time on the spinny cake thing, I have the Lockheed F one zero four. Starfighter. And this is the 104C tactical fighter and so called bomber eh, variant. And for the first time, you're getting a twofer. I also have. an F-104D here which is the two-seat trainer version although it was combat capable this one is in Taiwanese livery and actually this one is US Air Force it's one of the few used by the US Air Force in Vietnam. I actually am not rotating this because this plane is so light as a model that it's easier just to move it. Well, as always, the history. Well, in a nutshell, the F-104 can trace its roots back directly to Korea in the Korean War. And the F-86 Sabre versus MiG-15s that, that happened over the skies there. In 1951, Lockheed's Kelly Johnson interviewed Korean pilots and basically asked them what they would like in a fighter. And what he came back with was a lot like, hey, make us something similar to a MiG. They asked for something that was simple, light, maneuverable, fast. So, Lockheed made a proposal to the U.S. Air Force for a new lightweight, high-performance interceptor jet fighter, and the Air Force accepted it. it in the beginning, they, they actually uh, kind of really, you know, thought, yeah, it's a good idea. And even though it was just now coming online at that time, the idea was maybe to help replace some of the F-100 Super Sabres, which I think even then people knew was just kind of an interim solution, frankly. So they put out a tender in 1952. Of course, Lockheed would be involved. Also, Republic of F-84 fame would submit a design. Northrop, which would go on to make the F-5, would submit a design and North American of F-86 fame. But Lockheed pretty much was a shoe-in because they came up with the idea and they already had a concept. They knew what they were doing. So, it was announced that they were the winner. They were ordered to make prototypes, yada yada, so on and so forth. By 1954, there was an early prototype, not really an F- 104, but a prototype that would lead to it flying. By 1955, the Air Force had accepted it. They had some changes they wanted made, some things had come up in testing, so a revised version, and by 56, the YF-104A prototype took to the skies and would go into production. And it would go into 
Air Force Service in 1958. What do we have here? Well, essentially, this is an airplane designed around a jet engine. It's a big engine. It's a GM engine. That's really what they were going for when they built her. We're just under 55 feet long, but we're very, very narrow at less than 22 feet as a wingspan. This was really the first Mach 2 interceptor of the Air Force and by that I mean it could even it, it was comfortable even cruising at Mach 2 and it was real happy at about Mach 1.4 1.5 it could really climb to I mean it could definitely operate at 50,000 feet but I've read reports of it going quite a bit higher it was just a fast little critter of course, the flip side to that, it was a lightweight plane. It could only carry limited fuel, so it had a limited range. It would have two Sidewinder missiles, one on each wing tip. The under wing and under belly storage was pretty minimal. Fuel tanks could be added. It did have a 20 millimeter fast firing cannon with 725 rounds so that's pretty good. However the thing was so fast and such a it had issues as you're starting to see pretty much all these Century series did. As soon as they went into service in 58, there were problems with the engine and with landing and takeoff. Of course, also with just the limited fuel and range. They even had trouble with the cannon. It would uh, fire so fast, the exhaust would get in there, shells would get trapped, and then it would screw up the engine and flight. A lot of stuff. Enough so that after some accidents, the fleet was grounded in late 1958 for a time. And then, you know, changes made, put back in the air. And by 1960, the plane's future was pretty uncertain. Keeping in mind that this was not really a design an idea that the Air Force came up with. This was something from Lockheed that they kind of sold the Air Force on. <clears throat> the Air Force at the time did not really see the need for a air superiority, a fighter, a dogfighter. They really thought as they got out of the second generation, when they got into the third generation, they were going to get away from using cannon, and they were going to even kind of get beyond visual range. They thought the future of, do of you know, air-to-air -air combat would be missiles, and they really were looking for planes that were more uh, ground attack or bomber interception. They just didn't see much use in uh, essentially what was a hot rod fighter plane, kind of more traditional fighter. However... In 1961, tensions heated up in Europe over the Berlin Wall. And so 60 U.S. Air Force F-105As were sent over, deployed there. And by 63, the Air Force decided to mobilize a few more. And these were first deployed in Vietnam in April of 1965, most famously at Da Nang, which is what this is a model here. Now this is the F-105C, 
which was a tactical air command variant designed as a fighter bomber and basically that meant it was given a kind of a what they call a catamaran on the belly to hold two extra sidewinder missiles it could also carry one nuclear bomb there if needed still a very light loadout and the problem is hanging off the belly like that the ground clearance on the runway was very tight with those on the belly so it was not an ideal solution and they tried to um, they use these as an air superiority fighter by default also as a you know bomber escort that worked out pretty well you know because it was expected to do air to air things they also gave it the capability of aerial refueling you see the probe on the front there but they also tried to use it as a, a bomber and a fighter bomber it's not so great at all kind of sucks because it can't carry much also this is a very fast plane and it's real slim and sharp but it also turns like a pig it's not known for great turn radius and it likes going fast once you get below about Mach 1.2 it starts to really not handle great and below Mach 1 as you slow down its handling goes further and further down and of course with uh, with more ordnance loaded up on it that was likely to happen it's also quite famous to point out that these wings on here have very sharp edges the original military you know the original plane very thin very sharp wings Therefore, they could not store fuel in the wings. The fuel was all in the fuselage. So, these were used in 1965 from April through October, about half a year. They had not shot down any MiGs, but they did act as a pretty good deterrent. At least that's what the Air Force says. And if three airplanes were lost in combat with a couple of others lost through accidents you know honestly that just that happens in a combat zone and then they were deployed again as for a second time in June of 1966 and they would stay on station for another 13 months through July of 67 and then they were sent home and really never seen in Vietnam again and honestly once they went home from that tour most of these were mustered out of the Air Force. The Air Force had fewer than 300 starfighters anyway. And they started to actually phase them out as early as 65. Well, by 68, 69, they were pretty much all gone from the Air Force. Some being shifted over to the Air Guard, but even then, not a, not a whole lot. Again, they just, they just didn't have a large number of them anyway. But... Just because the U.S. Air Force wasn't too enamored did not mean that foreign customers were not. Sort of. This one here, as I said, was used by Taiwan. It is the F-104D variant, which was the trainer variant of the C. Now, this was a combat capable. The D could carry ordnance under the wings. But because of the second crew member, it did not have the M61 Vulcan cannon. So it, it lost its gun, but it could still carry ordnance. Just so you know, the 104B was the two-seat trainer version of the, the A. There was a version with parts built by Lockheed in the US and assembled in Japan by Mitsubishi known as the F-104J and its trainer was the F-104DJ it had a slightly improved engine but otherwise was quite similar to either of these Probably the most famous version 
and the one that was produced in the most numbers was the F-104G. It was used by Germany, Canada, and several others. It had a strengthened fuselage, better fuel capacity, redesigned flaps to try to give it a little better maneuverability, Another change that's worth pointing out, early ones had a downward ejecting seat, which you can imagine has obvious problems, especially on the ground or going at low speed. Later they would go to a more standard upward ejecting seat. But it, the plane still had to be going at least 100 miles per hour because of this big tall tail on the back, otherwise you would smack the tail. Also, the pilots had to basically be strapped in, and they used like stirrups to strap their feet in, so kind of unique. It was, a, like I said, a little hot rod plane, very small, and had some re pretty unique systems. There was also the F-104S, which was a dedicated interceptor version. Had some changes to make it better as a air-to-air -air interceptor, including an improved radar. And this was designed for Italy. He would actually use them for quite a long time. I think they were ended up being the final users of the Starfighter. And that was also an all-weather version. Interestingly, so far, this is the most successful Century series we've looked at. Lockheed and subsidiaries and contracts and everything, they produced just under 2,600, 2,600 of these, including all variants, which is considerably more than anything else, even the F-100. So, the, 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 the plane had a real spotty reputation it was almost loathed by some in Germany. It was considered to be actually a very unsafe plane, at least compared to its contemporaries. But on the other hand, it was a very high-performance plane. Nothing else was nearly as fast as the Starfighter, and nothing was as small and sleek. So like anything, there are trade-offs. And like anything in the Century series, it was just kind of early days. And there you pretty much have it, guys. If you can't tell, because I actually have two of these, I like the Starfighter and I like um, the Hobbymaster rendition. It's a light little model, as you would expect. But it is pretty much all metal except for, let's see, part of the tail, I believe, is plastic. Yeah, the tail, the little T on the tail. But the wings, the body, of course the pedo tube is plastic. But everything else is metal. And has a really neat landing gear. <laughs> it's kind of very intricate with lots of little doors and things. This one here, because it's a trainer is not armed it's just very sleek which I think looks neat for a starfighter really presents itself as a uh, very capable little fast rocket plane these uh, did set some world speed records and time to climb and that kind of stuff they they were again they were a little hot rod at the time and then I have this US AF version circa 19 65 Da Nang, so I can have an armed version. It does have the missiles on the side. It also has the, if I can show you maybe, the underbelly missiles on that catamaran. Those are removable if you don't want them there. The, the wingtip missiles are not. Usually on the Hobby Masters, the wingtips are permanent. And it does have the aerial refueling probe, as I said. And of course, this is a single seater, whereas, of course, this one has two crew.
And of course, the crew come out if you don't want them, and the canopies can be displayed open or closed. Typical Hobby Master stuff. Well, guys, I think that's good on the Starfighter. I think it's a cool design. There was something about Lockheed's design aesthetic back then. Very interesting stuff. Well, any questions or comments? Please post them below. If you could, like, share, and subscribe. Also check out some of the other videos I've done in this series if you get time. And as always, I like to remind you at the end, if you'd like to go over to Pete's Collectibles and use product code MISHA, M-I-S-H-A, you can save 15%. Pick up a little model. There's actually some new variants of the 104 coming out this summer. Anyway, appreciate you tuning in. And I'll catch you very soon next time.